Well, it's official. Brad Keselowski is joining Roush Fenway Racing as both a driver and a team owner. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric, and welcome to Out of the Groove, Show and Tell Tuesday edition. We have a lot of NASCAR news to get to, but at the end of this episode, I'll be opening the mail that y'all sent me in the past week or so. Again, this is your final reminder that P.O. Box is closing at the end of this month, so last, last call if you would like to send anything to show off on Out of the Groove. But first things first, we have a couple of big stories to react to. We'll talk all about Roush Fenway and Brad Keselowski's big announcement in just a few moments, but first, some other news from earlier this week. Yesterday, in fact, NASCAR confirmed that they have approved of the next gen's safety test results and are now shipping next gen chassis to all of the race teams. This is what was being reported yesterday morning. NASCAR is telling media members today that it met with the safety panel following the crash test and discussions went well enough to start distributing the next gen chassis to teams by the end of this week. From NASCAR directly, NASCAR officials said Monday that they were satisfied with a meeting about the next-gen car's crash test findings and that chassis distribution would begin later this week. So these discussions NASCAR is talking about, they have an independent panel of doctors of engineers that they go to to discuss any sort of safety concerns. And according to NASCAR, their findings were such that NASCAR feels comfortable shipping the cars out to all of the teams. In other words, the next-gen car has been deemed safe by NASCAR, and apparently by that independent team of experts as well. This is notable news for two reasons. Firstly, finally, teams are gonna get their hands on the next gen car. By the end of this week, teams will be able to fully assemble next gen cars, hopefully in time for those tire tests coming up later in the summer and into the early fall. So that's big news as far as timelines and the scheduling is concerned to ensure that the next gen car is properly prepared for the beginning of the 2022 NASCAR Cup Series season. But the second reason this is a big deal is because if you've kept up with social media or this show in the last couple weeks, there were serious rumors and some concerns even being expressed by the drivers just about a week and a half ago at Atlanta about the safety of the next gen car. You'll remember there are rumors going around that the crash test at Talladega a few weeks ago went poorly, that the crash test dummy suffered serious injuries and that NASCAR was going back to the drawing board with Delara and Technique and everyone involved and there was gonna be a huge delay. These were the rumors that the internet was spreading and NASCAR pretty quickly shut them down, said no, we're just waiting an extra week to get that independent panel to deliver their findings to us and ensure that everything is good. But no, the crash test went fine. Everything's being blown out of proportion. You had all sorts of conflicting voices both inside and outside the industry. Drivers were voicing some of their concerns, but at the same time, several drivers, namely Denny Hamlin, did say that if that independent panel of experts came back and said that the car was safe, that he would trust NASCAR and he would feel safe getting into that race car. That seems to be what has happened here. So that's the reason this is big news is NASCAR has deemed the next gen car safe based on its findings, based on an independent panel's findings. So now the next gen car theoretically is set to go on track next year. So that is important news. Actually, NASCAR released this photo of a next-gen chassis and you can kind of get an idea of what you're looking at. This is from the back of the car. You're looking at the very back of the car. You see those foam panels, you see those metal bars. I'm no engineer, I don't know everything I'm looking at, but I know those metal bars that are kind of built to fold in and crumble in the case of an impact to help mitigate the forces that the driver themselves feel in the case of a major, major crash. But there you have it, NASCAR says the next gen car is safe. The next gen chassis reportedly was designed by Delara, who also designs and builds the chassis for IndyCar, but the chassis are actually being built by Technique, who are based in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. They're the ones shipping the actual fully assembled chassis to all of the race teams. So yes, that is a big change between how things have been done traditionally to how things will be done next year. As a cost-saving measure, the teams will not be building their own chassis themselves. Instead, they will all be basically purchasing already completed chassis from a single source. This is mainly done in an effort to limit costs, but one effect it will likely have is it will probably even the playing field just a little bit because the chassis, I mean, the framework, the skeleton of the car, that is a major component. The biggest and wealthiest team Teams can always afford the newest and the best chassis as opposed to the smaller teams. But now everyone's getting the same thing. So that's a major element of competition that's now been effectively balanced. And I mention that because that leads into the other big story of the day. Not necessarily
necessarily a surprising story if you've kept up with NASCAR news and rumors the last couple of months, but Roush Fenway Racing made a major team announcement today. They introduced Brad Keselowski as not only the new driver of the number six car for next season, but also as a minority team owner. That's right, Brad Keselowski is joining Jack Roush and the Fenway Group as a team owner, a partial owner of Roush Fenway Racing. No word, no confirmation yet if they're going to change the name, but it sounds like that is a possibility. Roush Fenway Keselowski, RFK, that's been rumored, reported in the past, so we'll see if that comes to fruition. But Jack Roush, Brad Keselowski, Roush Fenway President Steve Newmark, and others all held a major press conference at the NASCAR Hall of Fame today. A lot of the things they went over in this press conference, we already knew. I mean, we've known about Keselowski joining Roush for a couple of months now, but there were a few interesting tidbits and details that I thought would be good to share with y'all. For one, it was interesting to hear how this deal came together. We actually heard from Roger Penske earlier this week. He said that when he approached Brad Keselowski about you know extending him beyond this season, Keselowski said that he wanted an ownership stake, and that's not something that Team Penske was willing to give up at that time, so that's why Keselowski ultimately went to Roush. Brad Keselowski iterated during the announcement today that a long-term driving contract was really important to him, something that Penske had been unable to get him the last couple of years. Remember last year, Keselowski was looking for a long-term extension and maybe partially due to the pandemic and that uncertainty, he only got a one-year deal from Penske. We knew at the time that that's not what Brad Keselowski was looking for. He reiterated that today, that he was really looking for a multi-year driving contract. He got that from Roush. He was also looking for something to do beyond his driving career. He reiterated over and over again today that that's important to him. He wants to stay involved in NASCAR past his prime driving years. So the ownership role was important. He's also taking on a pretty hefty leadership role at Roush Fenway Racing beginning as soon as next year. They're forming some sort of new competition committee and Brad Keselowski will be the head of that department. So there are at least two or three major components of this deal that made it extremely enticing and inviting to Brad Keselowski. From Roush Fenway's perspective, according to Jack Roush, Newmark, and the folks at the Fenway group, they welcome Brad Keselowski Keselowski with open arms. According to them, he's still a driver in his prime, so he can bring a lot of knowledge and skill to them in that respect. But long term, I mean, Jack Roush is 79 years old, and while he made it clear today that he doesn't plan on retiring anytime in the near future, he did say that he sees Brad Keselowski as sort of a, a transition plan. So Brad Keselowski, who's only 37 years old, he'll be around the sport for decades to come. As for Brad Keselowski, he said pretty hefty goals for the team. He said at one point that he believes Roush Fenway Racing can become the best team in NASCAR, and that's his goal. Not gonna happen overnight, probably not gonna happen in the next couple of years, but it could happen before long. And Brad Keselowski pointed to what Tony Stewart did with Gene Haas's team 10, 12 years ago. When Tony Stewart bought into Haas and formed Stewart Haas Racing, that was not a good team. That was not a team in a good place. Tony Stewart came along and just a few years later, a couple years later, he won a NASCAR championship. Roush Fenway Racing is in a better place now, I think, than Haas was before Tony Stewart got there. So Brad Keselowski joining this group, big things could happen. Big things could come to Roush Fenway, Keselowski Racing racing in the near future, and that's what Keselowski is aiming for. Now, they didn't talk a whole lot about driver lineups for next year. It sounds pretty clear that Chris Buescher will stay with the team in the 17. Brad Keselowski will drive the six. That was kind of a point people were talking about. Would he change numbers? Would he bring the, the 29 that has family ties to Brad Keselowski? Would he drive the 29 instead? No, he will drive the six, which is a famous, that's Roush's number. That's why I'm wearing the six hat. When you think Roush racing, the six is probably the first number most people think of. Even even though interestingly enough, his two cup championships have not come with the six car. So yeah, that's kind of surprising, but still the six car is synonymous with Roush. So Keselowski will drive the six. It sounds like early on when Keselowski and Roush were talking about forming this partnership, they discussed the possibility of going after another charter and expanding to a three car team. But you know, they talked about today, Steve Newmark, president of Roush talked about today, the price for charters these days is very, very expensive. So Roush Fenway will not be expanding their operations next year. They will remain a two car team. And that leaves Ryan Newman, the current driver of the six, 
without a ride for next season. Now, Steve Newmark again said today that they have offered maybe a part-time ride for Ryan Newman next season, but Newman, according to Newmark, is it's confusing, Newman and Newmark, Newman is still weighing his options. He's seeing what else is out there. So we don't know what Ryan Newman will be doing next season, but he will not be racing full-time for Roush Fenway Kozlowski Racing. <laughs> so a lot going on, high-level sense. Brad Keselowski is leaving a championship contending ride at Team Penske to join Roush Fenway Racing in the six car as not only a driver, but as a co-owner, a minority owner. He's not the majority owner or anything like that. Although that was another interesting detail they were pretty candid about today is that over time, I think they're hoping Brad Keselowski becomes more and more involved with the team. And maybe one day he does become the majority owner of Roush Fenway Racing. That's years down the line, they said, but that seems to be a clear possibility. There's a clear track there. But anyway, yes, Keselowski will become a leader over at Roush Fenway Racing. He will also drive for the team. A lot of fans sharing their thoughts, their takes on this deal. And I think it's important to remember one big thing. And there's a reason why I led with that next gen chassis story before I got to this. The introduction of the next gen car is driving this entire deal, if you ask me. I think without the next gen car, there's no way we'd see Brad Keselowski leaving Penske at this point in his career to join a mid-pack Roush Fenway racing team. Even if ownership was involved, I, I think Keselowski would put that off a couple of years trying to chase championships with Penske. But with the introduction of the next gen car, and as I said earlier, every team getting the same basic chassis, I think we will see a more even playing field next season. Still, the big teams with the most money will be able to find little advantages here and there, but one big way they found advantages in the past was by building the newest and best chassis. That element of competition is effectively going away next season. So that will help a smaller, maybe mid-pack team like Roush Fenway Racing catch up to the Penske's, the, Stuart, the, the Gibbs, just a little bit. A lot of fans are looking at this too simply as he's leaving Penske for Roush? I mean, if this was like 2006, okay, maybe I get it, but in 2021, why would he do that? Even with the ownership stake, like Roush is terrible. They don't put cars in the playoffs every year. Why would he do The reason is the next gen car. It's all about the next gen car. Still, I don't think the six car will be as good as the two next season. I mean, it will have a rookie behind the wheel next year. So Keselowski versus Sindrick, that might be interesting to see who finishes higher in the standings. But the point is, I think Brad Keselowski can definitely make the playoffs. In fact, I would honestly probably pick him to make the playoffs next season early on. I think this year, if Keselowski is in the six, he would be a dark horse playoff contender. But next year, with a slightly more even playing field, all the knowledge and, and potentially sponsorship, you know, Keselowski can go talk to partners and he's now a face that's recognizable. You know, all the extra effort that will be put into Roush Fenway going into next season, plus the next gen chassis, I think Brad Keselowski will make the playoffs next season. I don't think that six car will be as far, will be nearly as far behind the two as it is right now. Brad Keselowski is still in the prime of his racing career and he's a champion of the sport. He's gonna get the most out of that car. I think Brad Keselowski will contend for a playoff spot next season. And who knows, maybe if things fall his way, he'll make a deep run and might be a dark horse championship threat. That I think is a little, over the top. I don't even think he's really a championship threat this year, the way they've run, but you know, next year, maybe things turn around a little bit more for him. Point is, the six car is not nearly, as, going to be nearly as bad next year as people think it will be. I think it's going to be a lot closer to the two car performance-wise than many fans are realizing. So there's still reason to be excited if you're a Brad Keselowski fan. You also know that your guy is going to be involved in the sport for decades to come. So even after he retires from driving, he'll still have his fingerprints all over one of NASCAR's most historic and successful race teams. So so there's reasons to be excited if you're a Brad Keselowski fan. The reason I'm excited though, just for the industry as a whole, is because today's announcement marks yet another young, smart, passionate new team owner entering into the NASCAR world. You know, a few years ago, NASCAR had a little bit of a problem. Yeah, they had a lot of powerhouse organizations like Gibbs, like Penske, like Hendrick, Chip Ganassi, but a lot of those owners, a lot of those names, Penske, Joe Gibbs, Rick Hendrick, a lot of those guys are getting up there in age. I mean, I mentioned earlier, Jack Roush, is 79 years old. He still goes out to the racetrack, credit to him. He is still very much involved with his race team, but you know these guys can't do it forever. A few years ago, NASCAR was in need of some younger team owners, some younger leaders running these organizations to set those teams up nicely for the future. And pretty quickly, we've seen a lot of those teams make that transition. 
just earlier this year, Rick Hendrick bringing Jeff Gordon over officially as really second in command. Jeff Gordon being groomed to become the new head of Hendrick one of these days. That's a pretty big deal. Now Brad Keselowski coming over and getting involved with Roush Fenway Racing. That's huge for that team's future. And a lot of the new teams you see entering into NASCAR feature younger and exciting team owners. Like I've called Trackhouse the most interesting team in NASCAR because they are. And a lot of that is because of Justin Marks and his big but still somewhat practical ideas. 2311 Racing with Michael Jordan and Denny Hamlin both relatively young compared to other NASCAR team owners, or Colleg Racing with Matt Colleg at the helm. Next year, that will be a, a team run by younger team owners than the average. Chip Ganassi selling his team to Trackhouse as well. There's an older team owner that's sort of going away, but his stuff will still be run by a younger team. You know, I think there's a good thing happening right here. This transition was going to need to happen at some point, and I think it's happening now, not a moment too soon. Plenty of reasons to be excited if you're a Brad Keselowski fan, a Roush Fenway fan, or just a NASCAR fan in general right now. I think today's announcement was a net positive for pretty much everyone except maybe the other competition. You know, oh, Roush Fenway's got a new uh, driver, a championship contender over there. Maybe we'll see the resurgence of Roush over the next several years. You just never know. But that's my reaction to the two big stories from this week so far. Now, you know what time it is. It's time for another edition of Show and Tell Tuesday. As always, a huge, huge thank you to all of you who've sent things to my P.O. box, letters, packages. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. We've got a few packages to go through here today. Let's see what you guys sent me. This first one comes from Skip in Washington, I believe. Let's see what we got. It's from Skip and Kim, actually, and they sent some retro die cast. Check this out. Dick May in a Ford Torino, it looks like. Check that out right there. What else do we have here? Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, Buckshot Jones. Check that out. I like how the hood comes up. Some of these old school die casts, man. The details were impressive. And we've got, oh, I recognize that. That's Wally Dahlenbeck. You know, I remember Wally Dahlenbeck for his work in the booth for TNT, but he also drove race cars back in the day. So check that out. That's pretty awesome as well. These are really awesome. Thank you guys for sharing them with us. Some really cool throwback 164 scale cars. Get a good look at that. Yeah. We've got a big box here from Alex in North Carolina. Oh, he sent a wild combination of stuff. First thing I see here, we've got, where's the front of it? We've got an Alex Bowman hauler. Check it out from his 88 Exalta days. I love that paint scheme. This looks really cool. Also some 164 scale die cast, Dale Jr. Taco Bell car. I have the KFC car, so this one matches. I've been looking for the KFC car's partner in crime all these years. I finally have it. Some other ones in here, including, ooh, a Terry Labonte. This looks like it came out of a cereal box or something. Old Kellogg's car, that's pretty sharp. We got a Scooby-Doo car as well. I love it, I love the uh, stylized 29 on it. That's pretty spectacular. Thank you so much for sharing, Alex. Really appreciate it. Got a real small one here from John in Las Vegas, I believe. When he says, his wife made me this uh, yellow and black sort of Matt Kenseth out of the groove themed bracelet. Oh, that's sweet. Well, thank you so much. I'll put it on for the rest of the show. It's even got beads that say uh, Eric on it. Yeah, that's, oh, wow. Really cool, thank you. I'm trying to find an address on this one, where this one came from. I'm sorry, I don't see an address on here. I, I typed in the tracking number. And I, th I think it came from Ohio. It looks like it came from Ohio, but I'm sorry, I don't know who sent this. I don't think there's a note inside. Yeah, I don't see a note, so I apologize, whoever sent this to me, because it looks like something pretty dang cool. Oh, check it out, all-star diecast. It's a Matt Kenseth all-star diecast. Whoa! Now, I really feel bad that there's no name on the box. I, I'm Again, I'm really sorry, but whoever sent this to me, thank you so much. This looks really, really awesome. Let's get it out. Oh yeah, baby. This looks so good. Oh. I was at this race in person, so this one brings back some memories. One of my final chances to see my boy Matt Kenseth race in person at Bristol, a track he had a lot of success at. Didn't run that well in this race, but boy, he had, I think, the best looking car in the field. When they did the slid back numbers, a lot of the teams kind of dropped the ball in it. I feel like Ganassi and McDonald's did a pretty darn good job with this one. Is this Does this one light up as well? I think it does. I think this one lights up. Let's see if I can, uh, do I have a screwdriver? Of course, got my trusty WorkPro screwdriver, supporters of the show. Oh yeah, check out. Lionel did a really, really good job. Got the colors exactly right. Oh, I love this car so much. It does have the underglow lights underneath. You see the two of them right there. I don't have the batteries right now on me that it takes, but I'm gonna go get some, and I will put this car in the background with the lights lit up and everything very, very soon. So again, Apologies that I couldn't find the name of the person who sent this, but whoever you are, I greatly appreciate it. Brings back some really cool memories right here. How do you guys like this card? Do you guys like the slid back numbers on this one at least? I feel like this one did a pretty good job. You know, even if you're anti-slide the numbers back, at least 
I feel like we can all admit this one did a decent job at it, right? I got a letter here from Nick, who's also from Ohio. And thank you so much, Nick. Very, very sweet letter. Big Bush brother fan, but said he was a little frustrated when Chastain kind of helped, helped Kurt Bush win. Even though he likes Kurt Bush, kind of a weird deal, but that's pretty cool. Thank you so much for the letter, Nick. And last one for today, we have another big box. This one's from, I guess, George. Another one from Ohio. A lot of NASCAR fans out in the Midwest, out in Ohio. Need to get a NASCAR cup race to that state. Pronto. Ooh, it looks like we've got a die cast, a Daniel Suarez die cast, it looks like. Oh, uh, no, this is not a Daniel Suarez die cast. I gotta get this out of the box right now. Oh my goodness. Check that out. Holy cow. That's just out of the groove right there, doesn't it? Oh my, I, I am, I'm speechless. I gotta, I gotta get this thing off the foam here. Uh, where's my screwdriver? Oh my god. I'm speechless. I'm absolutely stunned right now. This looks incredible. Look at the detail. What? So it looks like they took basically Matt Kenseth's final ride car. They maybe changed the yellow color a little bit and they added out of the groove logos everywhere. You got the out of the groove logo there on the hood. Oh, you've got the old throwback logo there on the rear deck lid. Man, only OGs remember that logo. Groovy gang on the side. What's the, on the quarter panel as well. You've got the out of the groove logo. This looks fantastic. Oh, on the back, they've got the podcast network logo, slight variant. Oh my gosh, dude, this is insane. Above the driver's side door, they've got my uh, Twitter handle. I like that. I hope it's focusing. You can see that. This is, uh, I'm speechless. Whoa, no way. On the, on the C post, right? They've got the groovy gauge. Of course, the groovy gauge has to be full. This is a 100 million percent on the groovy gauge. Oh my gosh. This looks straight out of the factory. This looks absolutely perfect. I cannot believe what I'm looking at. George, it was sent by George from Ohio. George, I don't know if George is the one who made this or if, or if he commissioned it from someone else who does like really good custom die cast, but whoever I have to thank for this, this is unbelievable. My mind is absolutely blown right here. I can't, I can't even put this into words. I hope you guys can see all the fine details got, got my name and i wouldn't drive this car i'd let matt kenza still drive this car but you got my name there on the rear windshield wow holy cow y'all really are incredible the creativity the artistry involved in, in a lot of the things you guys have sent me the generosity of course unmatched you guys are amazing thank you so much for sharing this george i really can't thank you enough this looks amazing the groovy gauge on the side of the car that's that's my favorite detail. That's, that's amazing. Wow. Well, thank you so, so much. Uh, everyone who sent things into the PO box this week, this was uh, a show until Tuesday to remember for sure. I greatly appreciate it. I really do appreciate you guys uh, contributing to the show and, and sharing these awesome things with us here. It really, really means a lot to me. Thank you so much. I really am speechless right now. That's, that's going to do it for this episode. Um, Thank you all so much for watching. And another special thank you to my Patreon supporters as well. You guys contribute to the show every single month and I greatly appreciate it. The show wouldn't be where it is today without your very generous support. So for that, I, I really do thank you. Again, this is the final call for the PO Box. It's closing up at the end of this month. So just want to get that out there so nobody's shocked if suddenly it's closed and they didn't hear about it. Just want to make sure everyone's aware. But uh, thank you all so, so much for the support. We'll be back later this week. Still a lot more to talk about, even though there's no racing for the next two weeks. We'll have plenty of things to cover, I'm sure. Thank you all so much for the support. I'm winded. That was insane. Thank you guys so, so much. Really, really do appreciate. Y'all are the uh, best fans in the world. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next episode.